Hey Swayers, it's Karnak of Star Wars Armada Explained. Today we're going to be looking at the Officer, Ozzel card. So Ozzel for a long time has been a commander in Star Wars Armada. This is his card here for his commander card. Here's his new Officer card. So Admiral Ozzel, if you look there in front of his name, you'll see a little dot or bullet point. It signifies that he is unique. You can only have one Admiral Ozzel in your fleet. Meaning, you can either bring the Commander Officer Ozzel and not the Officer, or bring the Officer, but not the Commander. You can't have both. There's no clones of them. You can have one or the other. So how do you know Officer Ozzel equips to the Officer slot? Bottom left hand corner of the card, you'll see the icon for that. Faction specific for the Empire only, which you see there next to his point cost, which is two. His card reads, at the start of the first round, you may execute a speed one maneuver. Now, let's get into real quick, just how does this card work? What's the start of the first round? So this is after deployment and before command dials are set. It's right in the middle of that timing, start of the first round. You can decide if you want to use his card ability. For example, if he's equipped to this interdictor, you can say, you know what, I'm going to have this interdictor conduct a speed one maneuver. Now, in the speed one maneuver, the interdictor can only use its speed one nav chart, which it only gets a single click. So it can do something, you can either fly straight, or it can do something like that, where it gets a single click. Boom. Easy peasy. And that's Ozzel. In a nutshell, that's Ozzel. That's, he has no other effects for the rest of the game. He doesn't do anything else. It makes him great fodder for re-rollability with the Darth Vader officer card because he's not useful for anything else except to be choked out for some re-rolls. <laughs> Alright, but let's now get into some, some interesting intricacies with this card and other cards. Let's talk first about Moff Jerjerod. Now, this is going to be a little complicated, and I apologize, but if you go watch my Engine Tech videos or Moff Jerjerod videos, this explains this in more detail. But what about, not that card, uh, all of this and Engine Techs combined? Let's go through it first with just this interaction between these two guys. So, if your ship is deployed at speed 1, uh, for example, again, on this interdictor with Ozzel, and you want your ship to not just have the one click, you want it to have the two clicks, you can use Moff Jerjerod's ability, because again, it's, it's still during a determined course step. You suffer one damage to change the first job value of its current speed to two until the end of its activation. And some people are going to get hung up on that. It's like, well, it's not activating. Well, that's correct. The ship technically is not activating. But you still are taking that damage to that ship, and its activation is still to follow. So you've taken the damage, so it does work with Ozzel, the speed one maneuver. So, you know, he takes the damage, you're going to say he puts it on the rear of the interdictor here. You change that to two clicks, one, two. He does his movement, bam. Now, when that ship actually is, it's time for it to activate, as long as it's still staying at speed 1, Jer Gerard's effect is still in effect for that ship because now it is its activation. Um, so because, again, you can still suffer that damage during that ship's de determined core step. Um, it, it's still, all, again, it's in terms of how it's worded. It's until the end of its activation. So even if it's doing that Persido movement activation which is still, again, it's not a true activation. I'm going to point this out later of another interaction. Uh, it still carries over into its activation for when that ship actually activates. Um, and then it can, again, move that, that double click on speed one. Now I want to back up and I want to point something out. Again, this is not meant to be confusing, but I still have to make sure I'm covering it. So if you deploy this interdictor, for example, at speed two, and you want to use Ozzel, Jer Gerard does not help you uh, for this. Because Ozzel is conducting a speed one maneuver, and your interdictor is traveling at its current speed, which is two. So, Jer Gerard and Ozzel don't work when the interdictor is at speed two. Because you're changing, when you trigger Moff Jer Gerard, Again, you're suffering it to the ship's current speed. The ship's physical speed dial is set to 2, meaning that only when it's traveling at speed 2 
can the first yaw point be manipulated with the double click? Well, Ozzel is only allowing you to do, period, a speed one maneuver, a presido speed one, not set to the ship's speed dial or tied to it. So again, this is why if your ship is at speed two and you Ozzel, you cannot use Jerjerod to get that double click on one. It's only if the ship is deployed in its physical dial is set to speed one. Because again, Jerjerod specifically says at its current speed, which the current speed of that ship's dial. I, it, it sounds complicated, but it, this is like one of the most complicated aspects of like Ozzel, Engine Tax, and Jerjerod. But pretty much just short and sweet. During the Ozzel 1 speed 1 maneuver, if your ship is at speed 2, Jerjerod doesn't work. If your ship is at speed 1 and you do Ozzel, Jerjerod works and carries over uh, into your your next into your true activation of that ship. And that's the same deal with engine techs. So for example, if you Ozzel that speed 1 and you do that double click here, do something crazy like that. And you've done your Jerjerod, you've taken your damage. Now when that ship is actually activating, it can now do something like this with that Jerjerod. Again, it's still going at speed 1. Ba-boom. And then it can even engine tech and still have that Jerjerod effect. It's still going. It's not stopped. Okay, you don't have to suffer a damage each time the ship is doing a movement because it's only just once for each speed. You can do something crazy like that with an interdictor going just speed one, speed one, speed one, just kind of janking its way across the board. <laughs> Very interesting, all that jank. But again, want to make sure I was uh, showing that to you guys. All right. Let's talk about Ozel and fighter coordination teams. So this is becoming kind of the new hotness over like Quasar Fires and Squall. Why is that? And we go ahead and show the interdictor here, or even interdictors, gladiators. Um, it's really you know one of the two. There's flavor. There's different flavors of what you can do. So if you set your, for example, your Mora key and your and your uh, you know Merrick Steel, which is pretty staple in most Imperial fleets now, it probably will change. So if you do Ozel. It does work with fighter coordination teams because it's after you conduct a movement. So you do Ozzel, you move the interdictor, you use fighter coordination teams, you move Mora, Mora you move Merrick Steel, and then when it's actually that ship's time to activate, again, if it's going still just the speed one, it just kind of trundles forward. Again, then you can activate fighter coordination teams again. Boom. And boom. And as you can see here, if a enemy ship deploys on the front line of that, and even if it only moves speed one, Mora Key, for example, can still fly up and pop it in the face. Compared to something like a Squall Mora Key, move this over here, because this is popular as well, is that you move the, uh, the Squall of Mora Key in Steel, they can only move up to distance two. And as you can see here, this isn't nearly as far as what that can do. And so when this one moves up, you know, this one doesn't have as much uh, wiggle room. You know, you really can't mess up the movements on, on this one compared to the double fighter coordination team movement. I want to make sure I was pointing that out. So it does give a lot more squad flexibility for Empire not having to bring a Quasar Fire and bring Squall. Um, you can even put this again, like I said, on a Gladiator to kind of get that movement pop going on. And something like, for example, a Gladiator like paired with like Mauler Mythyl, maybe it has, you know, um, it's a Gladiator 2 of the Double Flak die. So you're moving squadrons closer to the enemy at the same time, it can kind of help back them up. Uh, what are some other interactions? So we kind of we covered those interactions there. Now here's one where people are going to think that this works, and it does not. Being very clear with you right now, Ozel and Squall don't work. So again, Ozel allows a ship to conduct a speed one maneuver. It is technically not a true ship activation 
in the sense of like with Squall, and here's where the timing is. For Squall, it's when you activate, meaning that that ship has been chosen for an activation, and it's before it's going to be revealing its command dial. So Ozzel, even though the ship is doing a, you know, a temporary movement, it's not a true activation in the sense of that ship was chosen by you to activate, and it's going through a normal activation process. So I had some people like, oh yeah, I used my Ozzel to activate Squall, and then I activated Squall, and I Squalled again. So no, it is, you can't do that. That does not work. Again, Squall is the kind of the same activation timing as like Strategic Advisor, wherein you are choosing that ship to activate. And then before it actually does anything, that's when the card ability can be utilized. Want to make sure I'm being crystal clear on that. Okay. Um... And where you probably will see, so that's that interaction. So again, I want to make sure I was pointing that out. Um, where you potentially could see some interesting interaction still between all that is you could, for example, use this interdictor to use some fighter coordination teams to kind of help bump these squads out. And then that way when Squall does actually activate, those squads are actually further away because it's close to medium that Squall can work. And then those guys can be pumped out even further. And then they're still in boosted comms range for them to get flown out and uh and do stuff so it's gonna make for some very boy if you if you thought imperial squad movement jank was a thing before it's gonna get even more janky now with with all that okay i think i've covered all the important bits with the opposite card one last thing i do want to point out is that this card is also still potentially can be useful on uh star destroyers that don't have their officer slots filled uh an arcadens trying to get that just maneuver positioning to get to where he can get his uh front arc or, or his side arcs on target uh, essentially can make demolisher speed five for round one because this is what a demolisher can do so you've got the ozzle movement right one and then you can do a normal speed three, so one, two, three. And then if you engine text, speed five. <laughs> so you can see he kind of goes way out there. And remember, Demolisher can't attack after doing a engine text maneuver. But if you have first player and you have last first, I mean, that can get you set up into some really sweet, you know, potential uh, ability to start smacking people around. All right, well, that's Officer Ozzel. Um, no other crazy interactions or anything else going on. Um, I do want to point out that he still does work through the uh, the Imperial Interdictor. What's its bucket? Let me pull it out here, the card. Because that card, the Experimental Retrofit, the uh, Gravwell Projector. So the Gravwell Projector is just if ships deploy at speed zero... Or deploy within the Gravwell projector, they have to deploy at speed zero. Well, that's only when the ship has deployed. So it's this is after deployment, start of the round. Ozzel can still have a speed zero ship move speed one. It's not preventing that at all. Um, the only time that this effect wouldn't go off is if somehow, some way, there's an interdictor nearby with a. Uh, with the experimental projector, the G8. So if somehow, because what is the distance for that? One to five. So the only the only way I can see that working is if you're doing something like surprise attack or fleet ambush, and you deploy that interdictor to be. Oh, Basil's chugging here. You know, with the station at, if he's somewhere like right here, then he can he can tap the uh, the G8. To, to slow the Ozzel from speed 1 to speed 0, and then it can't go anywhere. That's the only time. Like, so there still is some like very interesting niches where that can still happen, but it's going to be pretty rare. But I just, you know, still want to make sure I'm kind of covering that. All right. That's Ozzel. If you feel like I missed anything or forgot anything wrong, please be sure to point it out. Let me know. I think he's a great inclusion to adding more deployment strategy to the game. I love anything that adds more deployment strategy to the game. Um, but, yo, I hope you guys enjoyed it. And, hey, I'll catch you all next time.